So we're proud to present the shape of connected caliper. So this enables us to really start exploiting origin and keep our inputs super accurate rather than having data entry mistakes. We literally just send the dimensions wirelessly from our caliper to origin. So here's the most basic and obvious use for Shaper's connected caliper, DAOs. They say they're one size and they're often sort of approximately that size. So to get the perfect hole for a nice friction fit, we're going to measure these with the caliper and transmit that directly to our circle creation tool and immediately start cutting exactly the size we require. In order to use the connected caliper, your tool has to be updated to Kirby Cove. Now let's take a look at exactly how we go about setting these up. So if we take a look in our little envelope, we have the key info here, quick start, regulatory info, and all the little pieces of hardware you'll need to operate these. So it comes with two batteries and a little tool for opening that. That also has a place to stow in the box. Once we've installed the battery, we'll put the spare in this little cubby. So battery goes in the bottom, the little tool for opening the battery holder, and then the depth stop goes on top. So that's all where you need it. So now let's take the calipers out and go through the process of attaching it to origin and start immediately sending measurements across wirelessly. To remove the calipers, don't grab here. There's a little bit of foam in there that captures them and stops them rattling around. And there's a finger pull area to the right. First things first, screen protective film. Always fun to take them off. And then this little protective paper just to keep the jaws apart in transit. Let's take our little orange battery container tool, push it in the back there and then just tilt it and that will pop that out. So the little battery holder has a shoulder in the bottom that aligns with the bottom side of your battery. So you put the flat side up, drop it in there. And then with your caliper facing towards you the way you would naturally view them, just bring it in and slide it down. Make sure it doesn't get counted off at a weird angle and then just press it all the way down. So let's go through all the buttons here. We have on and off. So long click to power down, short click to power up, and it serves two purposes. It can also zero. So if I want to zero my caliper in this state, tap it for zero. So tap to power on, tap to zero, and long click to power off. Now taking a look at the units button, this just toggles through millimeters inches in decimals, and then inches in fractions. And then it'll just keep repeating back through millimeters. Now there's the yellow button on top. This is where things get really interesting for us and Origin. This handles our wireless connection. So basically anything you see on the screen, whenever you see this connected icon, enables you to send that value, that dimension to Origin. If the calculator's on Origin, it'll just enter that data and you can keep working very fluidly and effectively. So tap to send and you'll notice the little icon flashes on the bottom saying it's sending the data. Now you can turn on and off discoverability with this. So it's a four second hold and that turns off the wireless connection at the caliper and then turn it back on. Once again, four seconds, it flashes while it's discoverable. And then when it has a solid connection at the other end, it will display solid. So we'll go through the process of connecting and disconnecting later, but that's what the buttons do. So let's take a look at connecting. Under settings, you'll see down here, we have connected tools. So I'm gonna tap that and we're gonna set about connecting these. So it's got a little introductory thing that will walk you through the process. So first things first, we've put the battery in there. So that's good. Now we'll move to the next screen. Here it's asking to bring the caliper close to origin. I'm unnecessarily close. This works great because I can see both screens, but I only have to be within Bluetooth range. So I'm gonna power them up and hit the next button. This is just a reminder, we'll get into this later. If the caliper was to be connected to another device, remember to disconnect from that device before pursuing a new connection. So because this is the first time we've taken these out of the box, we're just gonna go straight through and connect. Now, Origin is searching, and to reciprocate with the caliper, we click and hold the button for four seconds. You'll notice we're flashing, a little connection icon flashed there. Once it's got a satisfactory connection, we get the tick and the green mark connected, and this becomes a solid 
icon up there. So in this state, we're ready to send dimensions to origin. So pretty straightforward. There's more down here should you want to learn more about the process. So let's do a quick test. First things first, I'm gonna just zero it at a strange location and then remind you to bring the caliper jaws closed and just hit zero. So the first time you set up the caliper, make sure you do that. The different states of the little connection button. So if it's missing, if you don't see it, there is no connection and the caliper is not advertising or discoverable to other devices. So it's not saying, hey, let's connect and send some, send some data. If it's flashing, it's discoverable, but does not yet have a connection. And then when it is solid, it has a connection. So in this case, we're going to get connected to origin. Here's a nut with some interesting details that would be kind of a nightmare to work around with traditional tools. With origin and the connected caliper, we can just take a reading, take our measurement. And so we'll create a circle. And then in the diameter, you'll notice a unique little icon here. This is telling me this field is available for receiving data from the caliper. So when I see this and I'm in the calculator field, if I tap once the yellow button, you'll notice it populates that. And I'm in millimeters here, origins in millimeters. We don't have to be precious about that. That's all auto converted. So this matches this, that's great. Let's try it in inches. So it's just over one inch. I'm gonna re-enter this. It's going to get me the same value, but automatically it converts to the units that origin is in. And then I can place that and start cutting this geometry. We'll put this to use and show you all the, all the ways you can take advantage of the Shaper Connected Caliper. So here's an application where we measure our stock. We've cut out our positive elements, transmit them directly to our pocket depth and set about cutting that to the predetermined depth. Once we're happy with that outcome, we'll just measure it again with the connected caliper. We're not transmitting this, just confirming. And now we can confidently know that these all install with absolutely minimal sanding required. You'll see in these examples, the connected caliper will become a natural part of your workflow. You'll be measuring geometry, depths, diameters, you name it, and then just confidently cutting with origin at that exact dimension every time. So let's say we want to capture some of the dimensions of this tenon. We'll do the rectangle and then we'll do a slot on top for this. So let's quickly start by measuring this stock and then measuring this. We'll see how the connected caliper contributes to more accuracy and a much more simple workflow. So I'm going to start by just creating a rectangle, new rectangle. And for the width, just quickly say we're going to measure the width. And then I'm going to measure this as you would. And when I'm happy with that measurement, I just tap. So width measured and then height. Make that the other dimension. We align it. Tap the value. That populates there. Now I'm going to put this using the center and hit place. So we're in business. We've got the sort of outer dimension of our stock. Now I'm going to do the same thing for a slot. Create slot width and measure that. Once I'm happy with the dimension, tap the button, populates, and then height. And that's ready to take data. That's populated. And once again, we are centered. So we hit OK to that. Now, let's say we are interested in measuring this height here. Now, a lot of people get into weird situations where they you know, bring their calipers down like this. There's a little detail on the back here that helps aid keeping them flat. So for this to work, we will be in the cut mode. And I'll go outside cut. And then I'm going to set my depth using this. So you'll see here, this keeps us flat, assuming these are parallel. And then once again, you see we can enter that data there. So we are in business. So hole centers are notoriously annoying to find. Here's a cool tip that Russ shared with me. So we're going to start just measuring the diameter of one of these and see what we get. So that's about 25. So I'm going to create a circle and I'm going to enter the diameter. So we're already in business. Now what you do is you tap zero and then you measure the maximum diameter of two of these. So let's just do that here. 
and see what we get. So that's pretty much 90 millimeters. So I can go place, copy this shape, and then I'm going to position it in X, and I'm going to once again use my calipers just to send that straight through. So now I've got holes offset there, and I can go about continually cutting these holes. So every field we see here where we can enter data, we can enter it with the caliper. So let's take, for instance, creating a rectangle to accommodate some stock. So let's see here, go width, and then I'm going to measure this brass. So this will be like a line to line measurement. So it'll be a very tight friction fit. And then we can go height, doesn't actually matter, so it's gonna keep going, 200 millimeters. And then I'm just going to zero it. Okay. So now, if I go to my cut menu and want to start messing around with offsets here, we're gonna set this to the depth. So I'm now going to measure my stock, the thickness of it. We're ready to accommodate that with our calipers. We can still do all the traditional stuff in the, in the calculator, or we can enter it with the calipers themselves. Right, so I've got my rectangle selected, and I'm going to set my encoded depth. So that's setting just for this shape, the depth I want it to be. And I can enter it because I have my little calipers icon. I just tap the yellow button on the top here, 3.17. And then if I turn on auto pass, it's going to take my encoded depth and set my depth to exactly that. So now we can do some fun things like we wanted to fit our brass in uh, with a little bit of tolerance. So I can, you know, enter those values under offset. If I enter a negative value uh, and I'm doing an inside cut, I'm going to make that pocket larger. So I'm adding a, like a glue gap effectively. Now, historically, I've done things like this with following bits using painter's tape. So I can just measure that, and immediately I've got two strips of tape here. I'm gonna use that for my offset. Now this is a positive offset, so it got smaller. I'm just gonna switch that to a negative. So now my pocket got bigger by 0.21 millimeters on both sides. So this is gonna make a much larger slot to accommodate my brass. So just if you want to bridge the traditional methods with origin, you've got that option. So let's say we're uh, pocketing out an area for this indentation. We've got this little rabbit along the edge. We can use this detail, the difference between here and here, which starts off zero. And then as we slide it down, you'll feel it touch the edge. Uh, we can get our exact dimension. So then I can enter that here. I'm gonna enter it as my encoded depth, transmitted, and we're good to go. So be sure to start experimenting. It doesn't just end with straight data entry. You can start doing your calculations here as well so that you don't have to run them all on a pad and make mistakes. So let's say I want to make this lid sit on a box that's a total of three inches tall when it's done. So this lid will need to subtract from three inches. So it's about 0.4 inches. So if I type in three here and then use the calculator function minus send this data through, 2.6. We could have calculated that, but if it was a weird number, that would be a huge win in that you don't have to keep track of that in multiple domains and keep entering data all over the place. So now I know when I put this lid on a side wall that's this height, the total height of the box is gonna become three inches. Let's do a quick recap of the key measurement surfaces on the Shaper Connected Caliper. So. The jaws, regular jaws, these measure the outside dimension of something, like so. We're gonna use the little thumb dial to change our, uh, the other jaw, the mobile jaw, and just touch it up against that. Don't crank on it, because you'll sort of flex it and change your dimension. Just try to be consistent with the pressure you apply, and you'll get good measurements. So you can see here, that's the outside diameter of that, thickness, and then up here we have inside diameter, inside dimension, this one's pretty cool. There's actually a little detail in the back here that we can use to help us stay parallel for things like rabbits and stuff like that. So you just push up against the surface you wish to measure, and then 
this back piece. We'll just come down and touch that edge. So this is a quick way of getting, say, a tenon that's exposed like this. Get a very accurate, confident 90 degree measurement. So the bottom edge of the caliper enables this little probe to pop out and measure depth. Now, in a squeeze, you know, you can get a pretty good measurement just by sort of eyeballing it in there like so. But notice, I, I'm not confident I'm dead perpendicular to this plane. So I could be rocking back and forward, left and right. I'm getting kind of a muddy measurement. I want to be more confident in my measurement. So how do we do that? With the depth stop. I just need a flat surface and I'm going to make sure my little screws fully retracted. And then I'm going to press the caliper in against the back face of that slot. And then I'm going to make sure the depth stop is pressed down against the plane so it's perpendicular and then I'm going to make sure the bottom of the caliper is also down touching that same plane. So that gets me a coplanar edge that's zeroed out with this. So now I know where zero is. I can then take an accurate reading of that depth and immediately transmit that to origin and cut with that depth confidently knowing that that is exactly that depth. Now Let's say we're going to connect this to another device. So say I want to connect it to a tablet or a laptop and start taking some notes with my uh, caliper. So to do that, I can't just connect disconnect here. This will stop connecting to origin, but we'll notice here, if we go into our connected tools, you'll see the caliper is currently not connected, but instead of saying connect, it says remove. So it's remembered that these are what it wants to connect to. And if I hold down my little wireless discoverable button, it's going to start up and then automatically connect. So that's day to day. You're probably just going to want to be connecting to your origin. After extended periods of not using the caliper, they'll power down the, the whole caliper, but also the wireless transmitter. If you see origin comes up and the calipers are not automatically connected, Simply hold down the yellow button for four seconds and they'll connect immediately. So that's the most straightforward experience there. Now, if I wanted to connect to another tool, because we can't do it at the caliper, uh, we just remove it from origin. So hit remove and our little wireless connection button will vanish here. So at the moment, these are not connected. Quick reminder there, it will show as uh, connect rather than remove. So now even if origin is on or off, it's not going to grab that connection. So now I can power up my laptop and discover these on Bluetooth and we'll go through that process now. Let's now take a caliper and connect them to a laptop. So this is a Mac laptop. We're going to go into the Bluetooth settings. Let's start now connecting it here. So I'm going to say put it into connection mode. Hold this down for four seconds. It's going to start presenting itself as discoverable. And we're hopefully going to see Shaper Caliper show up here. Just give it a moment. We can see the laptop is looking for it. So we see the caliper is now available, Shaper Caliper, and it's showing up as a keyboard. So it's going to behave exactly like a keyboard, except instead of entering individual characters on a keyboard, it's going to send this as keys across to whatever app you have running. So I'm going to hit connect here. And we go from the looking for a connection state, flashing, to connected, connected there, and a solid connection icon there. So our calipers are now connected to this device, uh, and we see a solid connection icon here. I'm just opening the Notes app, and we're going to go measurements. And now this is just going to behave as though we're typing in something with a keyboard. So I could go X, and then take a measurement, tap the yellow button. And whatever's on screen is going to come across here, just like so. Now, we don't get units called out and we don't get any conversions. So if I change this to inches and take another measurement, you'll see it doesn't really tell us anything's changed. So it's your job to keep track of the units in this state. This is just typing out these values into whatever app you have open and then doing a new line. So it speeds up. You know, taking notes, just straight up typing what you see on screen. So keep track of your units and you'll be all good. Now, should you want to go back to origin and work there, just make sure you come up and go, I want to remove. So now when you hit your yellow connection button, 
and you're trying to connect on origin, there's no chance that your laptop will grab that connection and capture your caliper, preventing it from connecting to origin. So in this state, we can go back to any other device, connect and start taking measurements in the way we've displayed. With the caliper removed from origin, we can now pair it to another device. So in this case, we're gonna use an iPad. We'll hit settings, we'll look at Bluetooth, and it's now in a state where it's looking for other Bluetooth devices. So let's turn on the wireless connection on the caliper. So with no connection icon visible, I'm gonna hold down the yellow connection button for four seconds, and it's going to go into a discoverable state. So it's flashing, and now we'll see it over on our menu on our tablet. Seeing it displayed on the tablet, we just connect like so. So now this is one of the attached devices, except pairing, and we should be available inside of Studio to start using this. So we have this custom hardware we've made out of brass, and we're gonna cut a pocket to accommodate this. So let's use the connected caliper to do just that now. The caliper can work in any text field on the tablet. It basically will behave like a keyboard typing out data into any of the fields we have selected. So keep an eye on your units on the caliper. There's no automatic conversion gonna happen here. It's just a keyboard typing out what it sees on the screen, truncated to one thousandth of an inch. So let's start with a rounded rectangle and we'll start measuring. Just check your position zeroed because we're using a custom anchor here. We wanna make sure we're zeroed. Now, width, I'm gonna select this field and with our caliper connected, I can just take a measurement there. So you can see that populated the field. I don't need to pay attention to anything really. I just hit the yellow button and keep working. So let's do the same now for the height. Select the field, take our measurement, hit the button. It's rounding to one thousandth of an inch. That's all good. And then we can do the same with the radius down here. That's gonna be half this value. So let's hold that down and take our reading. And then we can actually do simple math here, which is super handy. So I'm gonna just hit divide by two. And you'll see that's calculated exactly. Now double check, we're zeroed, got our dimensions oriented right. Time to move on to the next shape. I'm now gonna make a cavity that can accommodate my screw going through here and sliding all the way down and seating. So we want it to make sure it's inside this edge so it doesn't protrude outside the hardware, but makes it effortless to accommodate any type of screw we would put in here. So we'll do that now. So I'm gonna create another rounded rectangle here. So I'm gonna measure this diameter here. The piece it's measuring is the flat piece at the top. So now we'll take that measurement and see that populate over here. For the height, I'm gonna just measure a little bit beyond what we need here. Now this won't be a hyper accurate dimension. I'm just gonna overshoot the length because we need to accommodate that head protruding beyond here. We'll do it, yeah, approximately an inch is fine. So that's the slot and two pockets basically. So two pockets is all we need for this. We'll use center finding drills to drill the holes to mount the hardware. Now we can just go and set the depths so we can measure that as well in the plan domain. So I'm gonna select the outside geometry first and then enter a depth here. So measuring this dimension, enter that in. So currently we're an outside cut, we'll make that an inside cut. And then we'll do the same over here for this little guy. We'll make sure we deselect the other one Make that an inside cut and then change the depth. So I've just got my screw head, the hardware, and we're gonna get a sort of reading by eye of how much extra breathing room we want there. About, yeah, it's like 0.3, we'll send that across. So we now just save this out as a file. It'll be available for cutting on origin immediately. So let's give this a name and save it out to use on Origins. Currently it's called Untitled 7. Let's call it Brass Keyhole. So now with this saved, I can find this file immediately on Origin. It's synced by the cloud. I'm connected to the Wi-Fi over here and logged in with the same account. 
I'm good to cut this immediately. So we'll take a look at that now. So now we have a workspace ready to go. We just hit import, go to studio. And the most recent one is exactly that file. Brass keyhole, everything's ready to go. Depth's all set. We can place it vertically. With auto pass and depth encoding active, everything is set up ready to go. So let's take a look at how this works out. This is a super tight fit, so that's what we're looking for here. We can obviously add more gap there should we want it with offsets. Now the second pocket also nicely accommodates our screw. Keep in mind this was all turned around in minutes and it's all custom hardware. So we can produce as many of these holes as we like right on origin. Thanks to the measurements from our connected caliper, everything's perfectly defined and ready to go. So uh, yeah, look forward to where you take this. Thank you for watching.